All right, Ike, Linus, and Eliza, we are back for the exciting conclusion of the Summer Breakdown Part 2, Dark Territory. <laughs> uh, when uh, when last we left you, uh, I, Liza and Cooper and I had just left the Wild Goose Motor Inn, which, uh, Linus, have you had a chance to uh, go and stay there? Uh, yes, over the, uh, uh, over since, the break? Yeah. since we last were speaking, I did go there, and uh, unfortunately, there was a terrible silverfish fire, and the entire place... <laughs> Is gone. <laughs> surprisingly, there is a guy standing in the wreckage, looking around confusedly. <laughs> yeah. this, this motor lodge, this motor lodge reminds me of a place in Kentucky that I stayed with with my parents on vacation when I was a child. It was called Lure Lodge, oh. and they had a they had a small restaurant with a balcony off the back of the restaurant, mm -hmm. and uh, their claim to fame was. Um, that, raccoons. Uh, they had raccoons. <laughs> they had raccoons. And, and they, raccoons. I think at first they like tried to get rid of the raccoons, and once they realized that it was impossible to get rid of them, they just like got more and more raccoons. So they would give you extra. Their deal was they would give you extra, extra dinner rolls, and then so you, you could, could feed throw the raccoons. Yeah, so you could feed the raccoons, so you could throw them off of the back balcony, and it was just like. 4,000 raccoons that would come out of the forest and just like swarm <laughs> these bread have rolls. You seen, have you seen that YouTube guy who feeds the raccoons yes. on yes. his porch? It was, it was, it was like just that, like only that. like more extreme. There was like little hands coming up through the, the boards oh, in the and deck. Raccoons, oh, raccoons had those creepy little human hands, <laughs> the creepy little, oh little opposable thumbs. Oh my God. Oh yeah, my God. It was great. It was great. Yeah. Well, we're uh, sorry, sorry to see the uh, the uh, goose uh, burn down there, but uh, it was uh, you know I, I have no idea how that might have happened. That's, Who uh, would have crazy. thought that Burnout Bob would burn that place down? <laughs> crazy, <laughs> crazy how that would have happened. So the uh, so the the we, we arrived in Oregon. Uh, great to uh, to to see you guys. I met up with uh, with you guys at the uh, at the old Pangolin Four by Four and. Uh, Got uh, got a little bit of uh, of time to spend some time in the uh, in the workshop and get some stuff cleaned up, and uh, we did uh, the uh, we did the podcast with uh, with Jeff from uh, Seriously Series uh, while we were there, which was a great episode. And uh, he was a fun guy, super fun to talk to. We had we had a little bit of a challenge getting sunk up with time zones, as uh, apparently Land Rover collectors don't understand how time zones work because we kept kind of missing each other by time zone. Uh, but uh, but we got it uh, set up, and gotta uh, be, you gotta be. When you have a slow vehicle like that, you got to be a little flexible on, you know, yeah. when you arrive. And when I think the fun. the only Land Rover person that knows anything about time zones is Tom Shepard. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure, and he yeah. made he went through all that effort and didn't work on any of us. <laughs> <laughs> it, didn't, it, didn't work. Yeah. it didn't work at all um and yeah we had uh, you know some some uh, a good time there uh liza and jenna and cooper uh went off to start some rebel rally uh training so uh they left a little bit early in the new defender so how was we got the rock chip filled in uh eugene by the way so that uh, as to not uh well, have it split the windshield in half or something on us so the girls we were supposed to leave at you know our original idea was to leave on thursday at like nine o'clock and i think i said to jenna the night before i doubt we're gonna get to you much before 10 but we'll be ready to go by then yeah i mean i don't think we rolled out of springfield until 5 30 maybe mm. it was a day <laughs> of just like cascading like oh we have to do this and oh we have to do that but we were working on our sponsorship package and Jenna made it look really sexy and good. And like, we were very happy with having that she document that. with us. She, yeah, she's, this, that was good <laughs> talent to task. Good talent to task. Put her in charge of graphic design. So anyway, so we didn't roll out until like, I don't know, five o'clock or something. And we drove um, from Springfield to Bend and we took the scenic route that took us up by the lava fields, which... If you've never been to Oregon, you would not expect that these things exist. But like, there's like, it's crazy. There's like these volcanic lava fields up at the top of the pass. It was wild. Um, I got a real cool. kick out of it. Yeah, that's uh, Highway 242, right? Sure. Yes, yeah. I 
I clearly <laughs> navigated very, very well as the navigator for our great. team. Because did you uh, did you walk up to the little lookout observatory mm-hmm. thing and and look at all, through the little holes at all the mountains? Yes, and my child decided to scale the outside of it, and we had to go rescue her. Oh my god. She, now she, she will not categorize it as a rescue. She was she took great offense to being mm. uh, just <laughs> it saying was, uh, that she needed to be rescued. Un- oh, unwanted Jenna removal. And I, we yeah. were inside the observatory and we just kept hearing her voice going, "Hello, hey, <laughs> hi, anyone? Hello." Some, and some poor we go tourist out, we is down. like. <laughs> trying to look through the hole at a mountain and there's just a child on the other side <laughs> squealing but like but in. only like <laughs> six feet below that window right like she'd gotten up that high and realized well i can't get down and it's all of a sudden become a little scary <laughs> yeah so yeah. but she like doesn't a hat need a in a tree no no yes. rescue yeah. No rescue is necessary. No. Well, I'm glad you guys got to visit that before a QAnon person blew it up. So that's uh, mm-hmm. it's nice that uh, nice that you can, <laughs> the guidestone you know, joke too soon <laughs> too soon too soon not too soon Very, that needs to be talked reg- about. Oh no, that actually happened. Yeah, that actually <laughs> happened. Yeah, there you go. So uh, yeah, regional regional uh, region. Regional it's funny reward. to me that anything that you don't understand is a conspiracy. That's exactly right. That's, exactly <laughs> That's right. how it works, yeah. right? Yeah. When your series car doesn't let start me just in the say, morning, it's not let me because just of say, poor maintenance. Uh, because I am uh, doing a lot of research on navigation and orienteering, you cannot look up Map and Compass on TikTok without getting stuck on the flat earth side of TikTok. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, man. Flat earthers. They you know have the, some... The f- the Flat Earth Association has members all over the globe. Mm-hmm. All over the globe. <laughs> all over it. <laughs> the logic, you guys, the logic no, that amazing. they have used to convince their, themselves and to justify the story that the, the Earth is flat is wild. Did you we're hear about the Rocket our, Man? Gonna, what's the Rocket Man? The Rocket Man is a, a guy who built his own rocket. And he launched it. I did hear about him. (laughs) He's a flat earth enthusiast, a flat Mm -hmm. earth proponent. And uh, he built a rocket, you know, successively more powerful rockets to try and like get above the horizon so that he could prove that it was, the earth was flat. And he built a rocket that was like actually pretty impressive. And it it flew like, I don't know, a couple miles up in the air. And, uh, you know, surprisingly, he he died in a rocket accident, <laughs> <laughs> and we will never know if he realized whether he was right or wrong the whole time. But he, we have this huge is, rocket that yeah. said uh, "flat Earth" or something on the side. I remember of it. that. I actually do remember that. Do you think maybe the reason his rocket failed is because he based all his calculations on a flat Earth? <laughs> <laughs> Geometry is. <laughs> It's a little off. I would just hope that he gets up to like the blue origin, you know, about to drop point and looks out the window and goes, oh, shit. And then that's it. Boom. <laughs> His last realization was like, oh, well, oh, it's darn. round. <laughs> it's round. Oh, shit. Well, okay. So in the meantime, while, while the girls are headed off to Bend to uh, Overland Expo, what were you guys doing? Did Steven uh, crash anything else at? To your workshop there? Ike? I couldn't Did let he... me drive the forklift. I noticed no? that a hood got run over by something today. I'm not sure who did that. <laughs> that Maybe. probably happened uh, while you were doing uh, that. Uh, I, I think, what were we doing, Stephen? I think we were, we were packing all the spare We were getting parts. mani pedis and we had oh. brunch and mimosas. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Jason mimosas. Uh, we were uh, <laughs> brutal. Yeah, it's it's a regular mimosa, but it just comes with like a piece of beef jerky in it. Um, the uh, we were we were hanging out in your sweet tarp fort uh, outside of the uh, workshop, looking for stage one parts and some parts for Liza for the defender for the rebel rally that's actually jamming true. yeah that's it's actually true. that's true. what we were doing uh we were jamming the nada full of as many uh parts and it's very important as this will be important later parts not for the nada mm. uh into into the back of the of the nada to bring home with me because i had a big uh you know uh four-door station wagon land rover uh and uh, i was at uh you know the uh the ike and linus uh part circus and uh i can't help myself <laughs> but to grab uh, all kinds of things as uh, ike and linus and jason are all terrible enablers when that, it comes that, to that uh, 
it does parts collecting. It's true. There weren't any NADA truck parts on your parts not list. A I, not a single. Not a one. I guess <laughs> I never. One. That really yeah. never checked off in my mind that we you didn't. didn't we uh, didn't really. We didn't that was maybe an oversight. It might have been. It was. I would just like to state for the record that. Ike called it at Overland Expo. He said something about, do you have any, you don't have any Nada parts with you. Do you have a hammer? Do you have any tools? Do you tools? even have a hammer? You don't have a hammer. You have no tools. <laughs> you don't have, this you is don't great. Have tools, this is yeah. awesome. Yeah, Good luck tools, on your yeah. drive home. You know, typically, will, yeah. you know, Linus and I, we we tend to, to bring maybe too many spare parts and too mm -hmm. many tools. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, you know, mm -hmm. we're like, oh, we can fix anything on the way. And uh, in the case of several trips that we've had, Sometimes the Land Rover comes back like even better condition than when we yeah. left because we've, <laughs> we've worked on it throughout the trip. You know, fixing we, little we, bugs we fixing did things. go on a trip where we brought one spare starter and both trucks starters broke. <laughs> oh. Wow, you had to Rochambeau who got the who starter. Gets the starter. No, you start one truck and then unbolt the starter mm -hmm. and bolt it in and then start that truck and then just don't turn them off. It's fine. You only need the starter to start. I think it. we ended up putting the new starter on one truck and then building a working them. starter out of the two uh, broken ones. But of course, we, we, you, you know, so everybody needs one of everything is the only yeah. take that you can get from that. You need to bring a spare car with your car mm -hmm. in order to, uh, in, in order. And to you're especially unlucky because there's only 250 people who have your engine. So nobody's <laughs> going to have spare parts for you. <laughs> Nobody has spare parts. For me. I, I gotta be honest. I gotta be honest. Linus and I take a lot of these trips in the antique landovers. And I was like, you know, Stephen's probably going to ship this car home. You know, it's a long, hot trip in the middle of the summer. And he's like way, <laughs> and he's, like, way smarter than us. He's way better at fixing things. No. Uh, but uh, I was pretty impressed. He, you know, this is a pretty daunting trip. And uh, we're like, we've driven it 40 miles. And those 40 miles were pretty good. But, you know, it's a lot, a lot longer trip back to Los Angeles. This is yeah. the commitment that the Barris family has to the underpowered hour. Well, I'm stupid idea. Uh, I, I used to yeah, I used to own an NAD truck. Stephen again puts his family at risk <laughs> for the underpowered hour for the uh, for the entertainment for the content, of the audience. For the, yeah. for Everything for is content. For the followers. Everything for the followers. Mm -hmm. I used to own mm -hmm. an NADA truck, and I drove it from California to Oregon, and it did not break at all. So I mm -hmm. I was thoroughly convinced that you were going to have no we trouble. Knew it was so I took possible. out all the spare parts that we set aside oh. for you. <laughs> 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 yeah 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 uh, but you know so we we set off i can linus and i on in different cadences to get from uh from eugene springfield to uh essentially bend uh oregon i guess red uh, red redmond oregon? Red, yeah. it's true Redmond, Redmond, yeah. Oregon, yeah, where we, uh, you know, uh, we're going to attend Overland Expo, and uh, so I, uh, I took off before everyone else, assuming that if something broke, they would be behind me, and uh, and could, uh, if I hadn't gotten it, you were going so there, fast, would... I couldn't catch you, even though you only yeah. left fifteen minutes before me. <laughs> yeah, line is, and I had a new car. <laughs> <laughs> how so? Now, how was fair, the... your your new car was towing a hundred year old? car. Yeah, so but I was. I yeah, didn't have that's a, true. Yeah, but yeah. I could still go faster than you. Yes, but I couldn't bad. catch How it. was the cruising speed on the Nada? How was it? Easily was it hit six. I mean, I was keeping it between sort of 65 and 70 on the speedometer, which good. in yeah. reality is 60 to 65. Okay. Um, as you know, we'd sort of talked about like, well, let's keep it in this range. I had attached a thermocouple around the, uh, the thermostat because the, um, you know the the built-in gauges are, are are all gone. They're fifty years old. None of them register correctly anymore. It always says it's overheating when it's not not really hot at all. So my primary focus was just checking that heat every now and then. Now because of the way the thermocouple was set up, uh, if I had the engine off. I got the actual temperature reading. As soon as I tuned the engine on, the fan would blow on the thermocouple a little bit, <laughs> and the temperature would go down by about 20. So I was oh, this constantly doing this math to be like, okay, if it says it's 160, it's 180. That's fine. If it's if, if it gets to 175, I pull over. I gotta let it. I gotta double check that it's right. And then at some point during that, I realized like it's it's logarithmic. Like it isn't as simple as it's always twenty. Uh -oh. It's like well, when it's when it's thirty, it's actually fifty. And it, and anyway, so there was this whole series of math that I'd worked out. But essentially, on the trip to Bend, I'd figured out like three or four points where totally safe here, 
starting to get warm here, going up a hill, and this is where she's getting really hot. And if it were to go over that, then I need to stop and let everything. But down. you've proven um, that it is not overheating, even though the factory it gauge is. says that it is. It is it way was a overheating champ. Yeah. the factory gauge. It was a yeah. champ. Oh, no, it, it, it was great it, it, it on the way to Ben. So, so this, nicely, this whole process of going to Ben just gave you a false sense of security. So for, yeah, I was like, mm -hmm. for anyway. all of those people who think late 2As are superior, here is one example of why they are not. Mm -hmm. The electric <laughs> gauges are BS. Absolutely. Yeah, Keith. Keith. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, very well may uh, swap out that uh, oil pressure gauge for a dual and yes, old capillary yeah, gauge. Yeah, 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 with a proper capillary and everything. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, so got, get to bend, uh, pull in, find, pretty easy to find the Trek Defender, obviously, because it's giant and orange. Um, you know, pull in, get the car there, no problem. There's a, you know, a nonstop cavalcade of people coming by to look at the car. They love it. It's fantastic. Um, we went then to Overland Expo, which if you're interested in our impression of Overland Expo, uh, you can uh, you can listen to that episode. It's uh, it's out live from uh, Overland Expo. We have Nolan Yap join us. Uh, Nolan rode your tiny monkey bike, uh, which you brought along, uh, Ike, which was uh, super fun. A little causes, it bike. causes Nolan that, also that, that, uh, was very interested in finding out whether or not uh, Haggerty could insure my Model T when he saw it. <laughs> oh yeah and what... <laughs> yeah it is uh it is uh that and and, what, old. and you... the, the, yeah, the conclusion is it's too old. dumb it's just too dumb yeah yeah it's so worthless is... it's not practical to insure <laughs> it can't be insured no one will insure this why was the model t there well uh what, well uh, what did you while you day? were uh, at overland expo all day i went on a uh drive to a uh, rock formation in the Ochico Mountains uh, with my new friends, the Central Oregon T-Bums. And uh, I took my Model T that you uh, are... The T is for testosterone. Uh, yes, testosterone yeah. bums. <laughs> uh, yes. So, yeah, uh, they actually are really neat people. They have uh, sort of off-road and camping-built Model Ts. So they have uh, accessory mm. Warfords, uh, so they have mm -hmm. 12 forward gears and they carry but, tire chains and it's, yes, I it's still a model T, but, uh, they do their best. <laughs> and, you know, they, uh, gave me an award, which is the golden oh. turd award because I had the most problems with my car. And the truth is I did have problems, but they were very minor, but nobody else had any problems at all. So their cars, oh, see, their cars look like garbage. They're rusty and dented and, their engines are just coated in grease and filth and slime, but you can just touch the starter on those things and they take off and they are very capable. And they uh, took them to Moab and took them on uh, some of the challenging trails. <laughs> and uh, they, uh, Dennis drove his car to Chicago a couple of years ago and back just for the hell of it for the hundredth uh, hundredth anniversary of Model T. That's just dangerous. And uh, yeah. those cars are very capable, and I had a great time, but. My speedster is just terrible off road. It's just terrible, and uh, it just you don't bounces say. and the wheels <laughs> spin because they're narrow. And it was horrible for me off road, but the the paved part was was really nice. And I think I got uh, to the Overland Expo at like what seven o'clock, something like that. I pretty I late, yeah, something like just that. pretty late. The corn dog yeah, wagon was it was, but fortunately yeah, there was pizza, dog, yeah. so we had the pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had got some. We'd catered our fan appreciation event. Uh, the fan being Nolan Yap, um, and uh, we appreciated him. Uh, so originally, the plan was for us to camp at Overland Expo on Saturday night, get up early in the morning, break down camp, load up the truck, and leave on Sunday morning. But doing the math, realizing that there was no way to get on the road early enough that yeah. we weren't going to hit the like the highest parts of the drive at the hottest parts of the day. And so it we came to the realization at about, I don't know, seven o'clock that like, hey, you know what we should do before we record this podcast? Let's break down our entire camp and load the truck so that we can leave right yeah. afterwards. And we'll go, you know, we'll drive like an hour south of Bend and we'll get a hotel and it will at least have a head start on the morning mm -hmm. and we'll mm -hmm. get to shower and clean up and yeah. it'll be great. 
Yeah. Except that there was not a bloody hotel yeah, room to be found hotels. anywhere yeah. in yeah. Southern Oregon. That's because but we that's did. because most of the people who have those giant overlanding rigs were actually in <laughs> hotels and left their cars at the Overland Expo. Yeah. Let's yeah. all admit yeah, the, this is the truth. The <laughs> fact that the uh, the Overland Expo's camping ground was a nestled between a 24-hour airport and an active railway. Uh, oh my- did <laughs> make it a little tricky to uh, to sleep. Uh, I would mm-hmm. say that, but uh, yeah, there was about fifty two million dollars in overland rigs parked in that parking lot. I think lot. the uh, cost yeah. of fuel to drive all of those things there was more than all of our annual salaries combined. I think that's true. It's most. <laughs> it's more than the GDP of most <laughs> small yes. island nations. I think. Let's yeah. be honest. It was uh, not uh, not cheap when you're diesel like a super ram wagoneer grand toy hauler or whatever gets all of like a three miles to the gallon or something. But, uh, you know, it was a fun show. There were some great things. Uh, you know, we, uh, again, we can listen to that episode if you want to recap, uh, on, uh, on that, uh, you know, we saw a lot of great, uh, a lot of great. Reviews. I, uh, a lot of, lot of great well. products. The Teflon underpants are my favorite. <laughs> yeah. They just slide right off. You know? And, and yeah. things slide right off of them. <laughs> oh yeah. Everything. It's just totally uh, stick. Totally I think non-stick. I, you know, I was also uh, fortunate that I got to see Terry Ann Wakeman, who I haven't seen, uh, yeah. since probably uh-huh. 2017 when I was in Flagstaff. But, um, I think there was some discussion of us trying to, uh, talk about her book briefly on on the show oh yeah because, that's right well, we yeah were, we were gonna have terry Ann i think we're gonna have terry Ann on the show oh, talk about her to talk that about is a great book. idea yeah. that is a great idea and maybe we can ha- yeah her dormobile is super she cool is an, and yeah. and she is a very interesting human being. she is her dad was a machinist yeah. and uh, you know she did most yeah. of her work as a technical writer for I think mm-hmm. Google yeah. or some kind of company of that sort, Apple, Apple, Apple yeah. of course, yeah. right, right, right. Apple, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. yeah, we definitely have to have. She's her on a the Land show. Rover yeah. Oracle, you know, and uh, she is yeah. the reason yeah. that I like Land Rovers because I grew up uh, a few miles from her house. So, so we can yeah. blame her that you're yes, around all it's the time. True, it's I her used fault. to see her car, and uh, <laughs> that's why I like Land Rovers. So. Well, we did, and we're gonna we're gonna probably film it as a uh, as a piece of specialty content. Ike was visiting with Terry, mm-hmm. well, I'm sorry, uh, Linus was visiting with Terry while we were uh, recording the podcast. And and Linus, you did get a question in our oh, yes, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Instagram Q and A, and so uh, so you'll have to stay tuned to our stories. We'll probably post it in our Patreon. But first. who answered uh, the Linus question? Linus answering that question. We didn't answer it. We said we were going to hold it until the oh. next time you were. Do you want to ask so now? I think I think I know. No, the question. I think we're going to keep it. It's going to be tantric mm. in that people will have. Can to it be tarp trick instead? You know? Is that possible? <laughs> 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 yeah, absolutely, mm. absolutely. We did get some new tarp content. Uh, up yeah, there, in case uh, well, in case yeah. the listeners are wondering, did we sit? All of us as a group for like two and a half solid hours coming up with we, funny no, we wouldn't, puns. No, we wouldn't do that. We did. <laughs> <laughs> no one will ever do that. Absolutely, no. we did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we we embark uh, from you know just outside of Bend. We found a hotel. It was n- next to a Starbucks, which is my criteria for hotels. And uh, we we set off in the morning. Car was running uh, great. We got to the Oregon California border. Got some gas, um, and uh, everything was uh, was running. Did you really do well. any fuel economy estimates on that thing? I'm curious what it's. You know, we didn't. Why? Re- why? <laughs> Just like why would you this, break your this, heart so in that, that you way? know how short your trips are going to be? <laughs> going to be mm. yeah exactly that's right uh mm-hmm. yeah we hadn't really gotten to that calculation uh phase mm-hmm. but uh, you know started going through the uh you know started uh, going through the southern part of Oregon getting back into California truck was running great it was a beautiful sort of 75 degrees outside um and as we sort of started coming down uh, the you know the the valley we're we're trying to get to just past Sacramento so we want to we want to stay in I forget what area it is. We were Elk, trying to Elk we were Grove. coming from like the Mount Shasta area, yeah. And we were we had we had to go over that pass and then come down into Redding, yeah. And we decided to stop in Redding and have lunch, and it was about a thousand degrees. Yeah, it in was. Stephen's it was literally a hundred and five really degrees outside. 
And inside the car, it was easily 115, if not 100. I think I remember yeah, driving really. my truck to Moab. I had one of those laser thermometers. And I had um, yeah. I had Dyna mat on the exterior of the bulkhead. And I mm. had a rubber mat. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and mm-hmm. the, f- the driver's floor, of course, where the exhaust goes, that yeah. rubber mat was 165 degrees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would absolutely. I was believe just dumping that water would, uh, yeah. across the floor. <laughs> yeah, steam yeah. rising. Yeah. It was to the point where I was, you know, I leaned my, I leaned my, my uh, sort of outside of my leg against the handbrake. That's a pretty good because I like to kind of side shift the 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 throttle. The metal you know? handbrake. Where did the you get your skin and... graft? What uh, part of your body? Did <laughs> exactly. You <do? laughs> and at, at one point, it, and I was, I was sort of started the day and it was fine, and then, and then by that, by that afternoon, I would sort of, it, I would go over a little bump, and it would bump against the handbrake and like burn my leg. And so only later that day did I realize that I had some, I had some leather gloves with me, uh, and uh, I put it over the handbrake as to not burn my, like a, like a pot handle, so as not to burn my leg when it would bump against the, the handbrake. Um, except that the, uh, you know, so, so fine, because obviously the handbrake is connected to the transmission, the transmission is generating an incredible amount of heat and everything's metal so everything is conducting um we we got to uh finally got to reading for our lunch break at the outback steakhouse Ooh. which Ooh. very on theme Did you have a you know, onion? Very, All, have no a but all steven wanted was a place with extreme air, air conditioning, conditioning. <laughs> extreme and a lot of ice of, in his drink that liquid. just makes yeah. getting and, back and I, into I, the but, land rover that much harder though <laughs> that much harder exactly i took the i took the glove oh good god I took the uh, I took the glove off of the uh, off Big of the mistake. handbrake, and it had actually seared uh, a part of the glove where the handbrake Ooh. had been sitting against it. So it was like you know how leather gets that dark brown color when you get it, like you know, and everybody has the, the the you know the sort of beige leather gloves, and when you use them, they just get burned like crazy. And this this had a burn mark from where these. So so that just to give you an indication of how hot we had put one of uh, one of uh, uh, I had I, I think some shorts that got wet because I left them on the the, hmm. the, the floor of the uh, <laughs> <laughs> during the trip. I was, uh, yeah. And I put them in a plastic bag at, at the hotel so as not to make anything wet. And when we got there, the, it was too hot. The water inside the bag had boiled <laughs> from being so hot inside the car. It was literally. He's not kidding. No, he's it not was, kidding. And when he opened up degrees. the bag, yeah. it smelled like sweat soup. It was <laughs> the worst smell I've ever smelled in my life. And it was, uh, it was, yeah, it was it boiled them. Uh, so, so they said so we boiled them anyway. So, so we had a delicious meal at the Outback Steakhouse. I had about seven gallons of iced tea. I will uh, never have a delicious meal ever again after hearing that story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's and, why he told uh, you. And so then. The conversation well, was. So then we're debating: yeah. Do we keep driving? Right, it's the hottest part of the day. Yeah. Do we keep driving, or do we? If we want to get farther than Reading that day, we don't. Yeah, want we can't to stop there. We won't stop make it there. Back. We, we want to get back a few more. I hours. do recall from one of our and previous so- podcasts, though, that once you get to Sacramento, you can't stop between there and LA. No, so you can't go much farther. <laughs> So you have to get, yeah, you get to Elk Grove and then that's it because the, There's, the in between. Maybe it was forever. Stockton. Maybe yeah, you it was don't Stockton stop. in LA. Yeah, but it's like Stockton. Once you go you through stop. Stockton, you, you stop. can't stop again. You're done. You're There's done. nowhere to you stop. Know, you're done. You're done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so we get back and we decide, you know what? We were thinking, oh, do we wait? Do we, we're looking at the weather and we're like, it's a hundred degrees until nine o'clock at night here. So we're like, well, I guess we just do it. So we, we got back in the car and, uh, and you know, it was, I mean, seriously, it was like being on a vision quest. Like I, 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 I was fine. I was in the defense, in the yeah, new defender. Nice. I was it's fine. Like, it was lovely. <laughs> it was, I had, I, had, I just, I just, air conditioning. Yeah. Totally. We were listening podcast. to podcasts. Cooper yeah. was charging her iPod, iPad yeah. in the back seat. You know, I we had were filled fine. up I don't my know what water bottle. Is. I'd filled up my water bottle and I had some like a do rags and t-shirts and stuff that I'd gotten wet and I had wrapped around myself. And at one point we were now, Steve we're about, it's a, just a potato chip. We're about, uh, we're about an hour away from, uh, from Elk Grove. And at this point I'm just dumping the water that I have in my uh-huh. mouth on me. The problem is, is the water, 
water is yeah. hot. It now. burns it's you, hot water. and then it cools you. But it's wet. <laughs> <laughs> and then it cools you. Yes, exactly. But at least it's wet. And so you, were you having fun at this time? Or were you yeah, just it like, great. Uh, it was great. Uh, <laughs> no, at this point, he was not. At this yeah. point, he was starting to get a little bitchy. It was pretty bad. He was starting to get a little bitchy. Did, you, did you film any of this? I just, I I just want to see. I yes. did. The he did. The entire thing. <laughs> yes. And so at some point, we'll cut it together. He I had... set up three cameras yeah. in the car in the so camera. he could talk to <laughs> He's just going to be like, so what the what? fuck am I doing? Hours of him just being like, uh. it's going to be really compelling, yeah, guys. Yeah, really compelling. Content. Just brutal. So at that point, we got to Elk Grove. We got uh, into our hotel. I, I, I got into a shower as cold as possible. I considered going to the ice machine and just filling the bathtub with ice. Getting then, into the ice machine. <laughs> getting into the ice machine. Uh, that was the that was the plan. We had some food and we we passed out. Went to bed. Now this entire time, I hadn't really thought about the fact that. Um, I I got pretty severely sunburned through the windshield and the the driver's side oh, window no. because my knees. I was wearing shorts. I don't usually wear shorts, but I was wearing shorts, and the tops of my knees got quite badly burned. Ooh, that's a bad one. Which is just stupid. That has nothing to do with anything. That's just rookie really rookie idiot. mistake. It's a rookie mistake. Yeah, <laughs> I usually wear pants when I'm driving those series cars. But anyway, so we're like, okay, fine. We'll get get up the next morning. Now we're in the home stretch. Now we've only got five hours left to get to, um, you know, to get back home. You know, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get to Fresno. We're going to take a break in Fresno. We're going to sort of regroup and then we're going to get ready for what will likely be the most difficult part of the trip, which is going up the grapevine over the hill down into the Los Angeles Valley, right down into the, uh, uh, down into San Fernando. And the, you know, that hill is an extreme grade uh, for a long time. It's, yeah. it's, you know, it's about, you know, 25 miles of steep climbing. Um, it's hard for a modern vehicle if you're towing anything to get up that hill. The tractor trailers move up that hill at like five miles an hour. It is it is brutal. Brand new cars are broken down all the way up and down all the time. It's just awful. It's hot. It was 110 at this point. And so we decide, okay, we're going to do it. Uh, let's get these first two and a half hours in. Then we're going to take a power break in Fresno. We're going to get ready. And then we'll get to the bottom of the grapevine and we'll sort of figure out where we're at. We'll take everybody's temperature. We'll we'll look at how it, everything is going. To be fair, we left our hotel like six o'clock in yeah, the morning really or early. something. Like we were we we're, were pretty on it. We were pretty on it. Getting us getting a seven year old out of bed and into mm -hmm. a car that early was not yeah. the easiest yeah. thing in the world. Because yeah. we're like, like Yeah. We wanted to get home before like three o'clock so that we weren't in the very height of the heat as we're going up the grapevine. So we're gonna get there early. Yeah. We'll be and there before lunch. Steven, what what was it that you were thinking to yourself at the exact moment that uh shit suddenly well, hit the fan? Just wait. So I uh you know, so we're we're driving, we're heading to Fresno excuse me, we're, we're driving, we're heading to Fresno and I, we're about 18 minutes outside of Fresno. It's a uh, hundred mm -hmm. degrees outside. We kind of, you know, the, it didn't work. We weren't able to avoid the heat. And I'm like, God, this is, this is just brutal. Uh, it is so hot in here. Everything is sweaty. Um, you know, like, but, and then I'm thinking at the same time, like, is this going to make a good episode? Like there's no breakdown <laughs> in the summer breakdown. Like we didn't break down. Like we're going to, like we're going to sabotage it your asshole. own car, you know? And You're like, an worst asshole. worst thing, like maybe we fault. have to pull the car up the hill. Cause we're too worried about it. And it's going to get too hot or something. And at that point it just went <laughs> and that was it. And I'm like, Oh, there's no, Oh, there's no drive. I mean, it was driving, you know, I was driving it still and it was, I took it out of gear. So now it's coasting and I'm like, nope, there's no engine. Tried to give it a quick, a quick restart. Tried to bump it into first to see if it would bump itself back to start. Dead. Nope. Nope. Just totally dead. So we pull over at literally a six inch wide, uh, do not stop under any circumstance area <laughs> because of course that's where we, that's where we pop out. And I say, ha, huh, okay. 
Uh, well, uh, it seems, lies like we have a small mechanical issue. I'm going to jump out and take a look. So first of all, I tried to start it a couple times on the side of the road. No go. It was cranking really good, really healthy, um, you know, and uh, could, you know, open the hood, could smell a little bit of fuel. The bowl was full. Uh, you know, the filter was full, looked good. Um, all of that. And, uh, you know, cranked it, I'm, I'm sort of thinking, uh, there's no spark. Okay. <laughs> Linus had said at some point, oh, we, we were sort of heat so Soaking the coil and it was having trouble restarting um, Mm -hmm. after it was really hot. And I said, well, you know, it is 110 degrees outside underneath that engine. I did change the coil though. And it is a new coil. And I'm like, well, maybe, maybe it just got so hot that it baked this coil. Looked at the coil. Coil seemed fine. Everything's good. Um, You know, looked at the, you know, took the, took the cap off because I thought, okay, maybe it's points, you know, maybe the, maybe the gaps just disappeared. No problem. It wasn't really sputtering like that, but whatever you know check that first looked at the gap meanwhile while steven is doing this my daughter goes i have to pee <laughs> so so while he's investigating we're going bushy bushy off the side of the don't stop anywhere oh, yeah. in this area Just on the freeway t- total explosion of humanity on the side of this uh, freeway and so i've got you know i've got the screwdriver out checking the points and everything and i say okay lies can you come over can you bump it for me because it's not on a lobe just just bump it forward a little bit so she comes over and hits it for a second and i said hit, hit it again and she's cranking and the rotor is sitting perfectly still and i'm oh, like no. oh no that's not a and right that's before that he did say if it's this problem we can fix that and be on the go yeah. if it's this problem we're yeah, I said there's no spark so it's like it's a combination of things but linus and ike and i had talked about well the distributor drive has this tendency to could strip out the drive gear. The distributor drive shaft could break. That is a thing that these Nana engines do. One of the reasons that most of them yeah. now have Chevy six cylinders in them because of, when I, of uh, little gremlins like this. So when I, said, I bought my truck, uh, I bought it from a fellow called Tom Gross who lived in Redlands. And uh, it was, mm-hmm. uh, he had it 10 years. It was his only car. He had a uh, 52 mm-hmm. Vincent Black Shadow and a Norton Mm -hmm. and some other motorcycles. Mm -hmm. And he had this Land Rover. It was his only car. This Land Rover. This was his practical vehicle. vehicle. And uh, he said that one of the things those cars do is they eat the brass gear on the distributor drive shaft. And so I actually got one with the car and um, I blew a head gasket in that car and I took that distributor drive shaft out to, to look at it. And sure enough, it was pretty worn. So I did replace it, but I never actually had it fail on me. But he told me about 30,000 miles and those things can break. They just wear the teeth and they get thinner and thinner. I Mm -hmm. figured that, you know, unfortunately I was out in Eastern Oregon that day, so I couldn't uh, talk, talk to you guys Mm -hmm. to try and diagnose it. But yeah, is that the problem? It's not. (laughs) Stephen called me. Stephen called me from the side of the road and he told me this is the problem. And I, I had, um, I was like, well, it might be that distributor drive gear yeah. that, that was at fault. But, um, you know, Stephen called me, uh, today actually, wasn't yesterday. it? It was yesterday. Or yesterday. Uh, yesterday. Yesterday. He called me yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. And yeah, he yeah. said, uh, he said, oh, well, I took the distributor out and, uh, he sent me some pictures and the, the drive where it engages the distributor, um, coupling that, on the base of the distributor, all that was left was the um, roll pin that holds it in place. That piece had totally disintegrated. And Stephen told me it appeared as though it was originally made of Bakelite or fiber. What the heck? You know, and I had never seen one like that before. (laughs) Right. And so it was running fine for 750 miles, but apparently... Uh, you know, the wear and the heat, uh, it, it just, that, you that know, heart my, uh, my truck and, had uh, a Jaguar six cylinder distributor in it. And so I never okay. have actually looked at the drive of an original NADA distributor. So of an original Land Rover one. Yeah. I thought, I mean, maybe they would do something like that so that if something got stuck, it would, it, that part would give so that as to not blow mm-hmm. up the whole car, but that's it a is. stupid yes. place to put that. That's not I, where you would I put wish that. we I wish we could have seen <laughs> yeah. it when it was intact. We should like, look at the yeah, we should look at the other no, one too. Totally, yeah. The blue the blue one on Yeah, well, pull the one on that I, I, No, no, I mean the I, I we'll pull it out of the spare blue truck. One. 
and look at it. Speaking of which, oh, Stephen, yeah, we yeah. learned that the other NADA mm-hmm. truck that we have does have a burned valve, like I, <laughs> I said, <laughs> can happen to those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, there you go. There you go. There you go. So. So we find out. So at, at this point, I talked to Ike a little bit and I said, listen, I think it's these things. And he's like, yeah, that sounds that's something in there. Um, you know, I had had the 80 inch had once driven its distributor up out, uh, you know, because the drive gear got a little wasn't seated quite right. And it just pushed the distributor up so that it would stop engaging. And yeah. it got stuck on the lawn of a, of a car show once uh, because of that. And so I oh, we thought, right. OK, I forgot about we'd, that. We'd, we'd, we'd make sure. And I thought, oh, maybe it's that. And I can just uh, listen and stick it back to no, it was perfectly engaged everything was rock solid what have you and, done yeah. that you're haunted by joseph I lucas by, by, just did, every by distributor him. seriously God, i have seriously. a distributor issue uh, it's, it's his <laughs> payback for being so cocky all the time yeah, overconfidence so anyway so then we say okay well we're here Ike had just happened to give me uh, a tow bar for, for your a birthday Land Rover. And again, we were kind of joking for my birthday. <laughs> just in case. It was, it was actually it was for Canada a, Day, but yeah, it was for Canada Day. Uh, and and in celebration of Canada Day. Let him Day. think it was for his birthday. The, um, you know, we so we had this tow bar with us, and I said, Okay, great. We we need to, you know, take the bumper uh, bolts out to bolt this thing on. Um, and more importantly, uh, we don't have a tow ball for the new defender. We didn't bring one with us. So we said, okay, well, we're not going to like I thought it had one of those, <laughs> like, uh, I thought it, up I thought oh, it had one of donger, those on the dong. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't. It's just sort of this way, and then you have to cup the bottom. Well, for you those work the shaft, for those listeners unfamiliar, if you Google "new Defender tow ball installation instructions," it yeah. shows a diagram, a very suggestive more than suggestive diagram it, of, of it is clearly <laughs> a dick. Who approved that? It's who really approved it's pretty explicit. That? It's pretty it explicit. Out. It leaves no. nothing to the imagination. Let's that, just put it that uh, way. Yeah. That uh, that technical drawing uh, artist was uh, he's my hero. He really, he really is. It's there's like arrows the who, and there's he like, knew what he he knew what he was doing. Little, he did that on. He, somebody was mad at yeah, somebody else and they drew a dick yeah. and. Yeah, it it got printed. <laughs> and that's that's what happened, and no one else saw it, and that's it's... what happened. Uh, worth looking it up. We're gonna put that. We'll put that on our Instagram. Yeah, uh, for sure. But uh, so we we decide. So we call the flatbed, and we say, okay, we need a tow to the closest harbor freight. And they said, mm-hmm. say, what? Uh, well, we have a car. It's broken down. We we just need it towed to the closest harbor. What's the closest harbor freight? And we're like, oh, there's one about 18 miles away. Perfect. Perfect. Tow this car to the parking lot of a Harbor Freight. And so the guy shows up. He again says, like, where am I taking this? <laughs> we need you to take us to the Harbor Freight. And we couldn't. Like, couldn't uh, OK, whatever. Couldn't man. she just have and driven so, over to get a tow ball mm-hmm. and then come back? Well, oh, the thing was, it was, it was, it was, it was because yeah. we were in like the worst place in the world. So we're like, you know what? Yeah. We got to go anyways. We've got, of course, I own Land Rovers. I have the unlimited. But you DNA didn't tow, bring a tow strap. A, a, a AAA. Mm. But I didn't bring a, or a, a hammer. tow strap or yeah. any of that sort of stuff. No. Or, or a hammer. No, we didn't bring any of that. Uh, super, we don't need super any of that prepared. Stuff. Did we you bring a tarp? Stuff. Uh, we had two tarps. Had you could have, did, you could have towed it with a tarp. Just wait. The, we, the wait. tip-top tarp tow <laughs> strap. Oh, right. Oh my God! You're right. You're right. Oh, it was a huge missed opportunity. It was too. Oh, it was too go. hot. See, it I was, was too focused. Hot. I got out of I got out of content mode for one second, and I missed an opportunity for a tarp related uh, video. It's uh, I'm crushed. So we so we, yeah, we are in the parking lot of a Harbor Freight, and, a Costco, yeah. a Winco Foods, an AutoZone, and a Riley's Auto. No, it's not a bad place. It's not a bad place. It's not a bad place. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. And so then we played the game of how many times do we have to go into the Harbor Freight. And, uh, and we're like, well, okay, we're going to try to get this in one shot at the Harbor Freight. So we go in, yeah. we get the no. lights yeah. that we need because we actually have no way of putting directional towing lights. lights. And yeah. so, so we get to the towing lights, $30 for the towing lights, no big deal. We get uh, the the uh, tow ball, of which I now have a collection of 500 of them. So whatever, we get the tow ball for the, uh, you know, for the Defender, a, you know, a reasonable the tow chains. ball. We chained lots of, as many chains as they had. Uh, because so we were- We bought, we <laughs> bought every chain they had. Every chain they had. And uh, and we got out the tool roll, which I did have. It was just stuck under the floor of the defender. But I, I with no hammer. There was no, no hammer, hammer in the tool roll. There was no hammer in the tool roll. Uh-huh. So I got 
Like we got out the tool roll. Did we need a hammer? Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Did we have a hammer? <laughs> Hell no. So we get so that I set the tow bar out on the on the uh, you know on the in the, the the tarmac there and uh, and uh, pop the pin out of one side, get the little plate out, get the bolts out of the one side of the bumper, get the little plate in, tighten everything back up, go to take the pin out of the other side. Well, it's been sitting in a hundred and ten mm. degree heat for the it's past expanded. fifteen minutes and. No force on earth is getting that pin Oof. out of there. We tried pouring water on it. We tried, we did go in and buy a <laughs> hammer from Harbor Freight to try to hammer it out. No way. There was no way that uh, that was going on. So instead, we just sort of like held the tow bar up while we bolted the plate on with the thing in it and then put the pin in the other side and got it all uh, got it all situated and uh, and and all tightened up. And we put on all Meanwhile, the Meanwhile, Stephen is having a vision quest it sitting was. in the parking lot. He's we can like call him Steve, Steve Hartha. What was it? It was just... it's... Yeah. Oh, it was... my God. Did you see a sp- Did you see your spirit animal? I did see my spirit animal. Uh, uh, was it a yeah, dugong? It was, it was, <laughs> I thought it was a silverfish. Yeah, it, it was a. It's a, it was a, it it's was a, a dugong made out of strangely enough silverfish. <laughs> out of silverfish. <laughs> it was a five foot man <laughs> named Terry. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it was very interesting. Um, so we get it all back together. I'm constantly burning myself on tools that are too hot. There's like no shade. It was terrible. The tarp actually. But we laid out the tarp. Yeah, it was we great. laid it was out nice. the tarp really it nicely, nice. and it like kind of protected us from the blacktop yeah, parking nice. lot. It was we nice. Should have had it, one it, over yeah. the top mm. between yeah, the two sh- vehicles. Should have put up. Uh, should have put up a little a little gazebo Sunshade. there. A little shade. A little tarp shade. But uh, but you know. It didn't take that long. Uh, it did take two or three trips into the Harbor Freight because, of course, we got the lights on and then and then the cable was three inches too short to actually plug <laughs> in. So then we had to go and get the extension for the thing. And then that had to be, like, put somewhere and, like, tied around things. And we did all that. They know, they the know that's not long enough. Yeah, they know. It's it. not long for any vehicle. They There's know no it. Way. Yeah. There's no way. So then we got the we got the car under tow. Uh, we got to uh, you know we got to, uh, it was it was well tracked. Well, everything worked. You know, it's uh, when you we go to pull out of the parking lot and Cooper's on her iPad and she chooses the first time we hit the brakes <laughs> to go. Oh my god! Because of something on her iPad <laughs> scared and you. And I, see, oh my god! We jumped out of our skin. <laughs> you were about <laughs> to find out. If you could oh, fit like the new... NADA truck in the Defender, <laughs> <laughs> in the Defender, yes, yeah, because of course, flat towing it, there's no brakes. It's uh, we're just uh, hoping that that Harbor Freight tow ball doesn't just break off the back of the car. Happen? Uh, oh my God! So, so uh, yeah, so it's a, a perfect timing, and so we had to have the conversation when we're flat towing another car. Unless it's an emergency, don't say anything. Like, so how long uh, did that process take? Getting it all hooked up and everything. Two hours. About two hours to get it uh, to two, get it on the it tow. Was, well, including the tow, probably three. Yeah. Uh, the tow actually was quite was quick, quick yeah. but Lucky. when you add it all up, I think it was about three hours because literally we were sitting, we were maybe half an hour from being able to roll out when I looked oh. at the clock and went, oh, we would have been home by now. So, Great. So here's a, awesome. here's a follow-up question. In that three hours, how far did you go? And was it more or less than you would have traveled if you were in the Land Rover driving? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. It's hard to say. So, hard to say. That's hard to say. say. No, hard to say. Hard to say. But, uh, but yeah, under Defender Power, I mean, I think the moral of this story is if you're going to drive an old Land Rover uh, more than a couple hundred miles. Make sure you pack a spare Land Rover that can tow yeah. <laughs> that first Land Rover. We, we, we definitely, yeah. we probably, in retrospect, we probably should have sent you with another distributor, knowing, yeah. uh, knowing what we know now. And yeah. and I, I should have insisted that you take a hammer. I yeah, that's true. <laughs> you should have insisted that I, I wonder if the buy underpowered buy hour would uh, do hammers. well selling hammers. Yeah, yeah. It might not be a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, underpowered yeah. hour that's edition good... hammers. They're made of a light hammer. <laughs> <It made> a... <laughs> If you are a local right. uh, yeah, US made hammer merchant and you're interested in doing a uh, product collaboration, get in touch with us. We're uh, we're happy to do it. Uh so we got it back, we towed it up the grapevine. As it turns out, the new Defender does not overheat driving up a hill like the original Defender no. does and uh, got it off the tow, 
it's uh, it <laughs> then tried to push it into the shop by ourselves full of Land Rover parts. Uh, so we had Pretty to back heavy. the new Defender in and just winched it into the workshop with the uh, new Defender. I'm not going to lie. By this point, I had lost my sense of humor. <laughs> I was not having it anymore. And uh, and got it in, got it tucked away. And uh, and then talking to Ike yesterday, uh, you know, sort of saying like, oh, good thing we got that uh, tow bar or whatever. He said, oh, yeah, somebody just gave that to me. I'd never actually tried it before. <laughs> like, oh, oh, I'm glad. Ike, I'm glad we trusted it to like a 40 percent grade. <laughs> Going on I mean, it looked pretty solid. Yeah, it looked pretty good. It looked fine. It looked just fine. So I'm glad yeah, you so, brought it. Glad yeah, I'm. I, well, it, as it I'm, turns out, it saved us a lot. It saved us a lot I'm, of uh, I'm, heartache. So I'm disappointed that it didn't make the trick trip the whole way. But uh, you know, that was that was definitely an unforeseen circumstance. You know, when when will we always play this game? Oh, so unforeseen, so unforeseen <laughs> that last. Ike predicted it while <laughs> hanging out at That's Overland true. Expo it's and kept true. saying. <laughs> I don't know, Steve. This doesn't seem like such a great plan. This is it's an I'm old car. It's really hot. I will say I'm... this: it did make it the whole way, just not. Well, it did make it, it the whole way under Land Rover power, just not its Land Rover true. power. It's true. It's true. So now, how far did it make it? Seven hundred miles? Is it seven hundred? Uh, yeah, we made it. We made it almost eight hundred miles. And almost eight hundred. And you drove it seven hundred miles to good. bend too. It, that's, that's a right. pretty. So it did make that's a pretty it, uh, good a first miles. test run for yeah. a car that had. And that's a, it yeah. was that's like a big maiden degrees. voyage. And a hundred and ten oh. degrees, like it. it made I it, wonder if you'd uh, done really it long in the winter, at, in if extreme you made it. temperature. You have to I do don't it know. Again. There's only one way to find out. A <laughs> winter breakdown. <laughs> winter breakdown. Uh, we're Steven, back, I uh, think we're coming back up. While well, it's on my mind, I'll mention it. I think we took some piece off of that distributor that we sent you to replace yours with uh, to fix your current distributor. So there's a clip or something on the advanced screw that I think is actually on your distributor mm -hmm. already. So you will have to do something to it to to a little to bit of surgery yeah. to get it so to just, uh, be right just now that it we'll do it we'll get it it that car humming runs in no time. very well uh, that, that thing just sure. starts instantly I'm, so nice i i i, I really it's like so it nice. i'm so happy it's a great car well in conclusion i uh i uh you know i think that uh that uh, ted would have had a hell of a time on this adventure and we certainly did it uh you know with him in mind and uh it was uh it uh uh, a momentary setback, uh, as we know, Land Rover is a series of compromises. Um, you know, we'll get her back on the road and ticking over in no time. And uh, maybe uh, that's a good to... name for the Land Rover. Yeah. <laughs> a series of compromises. <laughs> a series of compromises. Um, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll have her back on the road and uh, and uh, ticking away in uh, in no time. Uh, and uh, and that's it for another uh, summer uh, breakdown. As uh, this is our, our second one, and this is sort of how we demark uh, seasons of the of the show. We got through uh, a whole a uh, whole year uh, of, of of doing this uh, podcast, and uh, thank you very much to uh, to you guys for doing this with me, Ike, for being here uh, for being here every week. Uh, this uh, this silly little idea that Ike and I had, uh, you know, about a year and a half ago. Who knew that uh, that we would end up uh, so many uh, stories later and uh, and still good to go? And uh, who knows uh, that uh, you know Linus wouldn't have died would, in some yeah. kind of horrible uh, antique car? I would still be uh, alive you know, if it wasn't for you guys. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. And that Liza and Jenna tolerate this and not just tolerate it, but have embraced it as, uh, you know, as the uh, sigil of their race the next, team. The next breakdown might just be ours. So. <laughs> I think it has to be. I think, uh, you know, I think maybe that's the uh, rebel breakdown. The rebel, oh, uh, God. The oh. rebel breakdown. I mean, something is going to break on the rebel. No, I, I just it. pray that it doesn't end our um Rebel and it could be like my seven. compass has leaked all its water out. I don't know. Oh, no. I, I think I think we make a lot of really leak. good stories, and there's you know it's it would be a shame if we didn't tell them, mm -hmm. you know. 
a Land Rover is a That's hell of true. a way to uh, to start a story. And uh, anytime you get into an old one, be it 115 degrees in the interior or uh, covered in micro suede and Apple CarPlay, uh, there's always a, an adventure to be had. So uh, that's it for another uh, installment of the uh, Summer Breakdown. If you like this show even a tiny bit, Liza asks you to please go to <laughs> Apple Podcasts and leave us a positive review. Uh, if you do not like the show, forget we said anything about <laughs> Apple Podcasts. We, we don't want to hear from you. <laughs> we don't want to hear from you. We're, we're all right. What do you keep listening to it for? What's wrong with it's you? It's your fault. Um, if you don't like you it, it's your fault. Does, uh, it's your fault. <laughs> this is just what we do. You know what this is. You know, this is an equal relationship. You show up and we do this. We put ourselves in harm's way for your entertainment. So uh, thanks again, everybody. And thank you to everyone listening. What a hell of a, uh, a summer breakdown this one was. Uh, Ike and I are taking a little bit of time off over the course of the uh, next couple of weeks. So we will do one show with a classic episode of the Underpowered Hour. For those of you who haven't, uh, Scott and Nick Dimbleby and uh, and whomever else has listened to uh, every, and Bob Ives, of course, has listened to every single episode. Uh, we're going to bring back one of the uh, classic episodes from the archive uh, for you to listen to so that uh, Ike and I get a, a little bit of uh, time off to uh, cool things down and chain up the forklifts and uh yeah, and to go break Land Rovers mm. in other countries. Exactly right. <laughs> There's a whole world of Land Rovers out there for me to break the distributors on. So uh, we're back a forklift into. So uh, with that, uh, thanks again. It's uh, been a slice, everyone. I appreciate the uh, the time.